So, what are TypeScript decorators? Well, they are kind of a mechanism to adding metadata, information or logic to our already existing source code. And in TypeScript, decorators resemble other ways of metaprogramming like uh, Java annotations, c -sharp attributes or Python decorators. They help us to add something to our already existing logic and they are a popular choice for libraries like uh, Angular, like Nest.js. In this way, you must understand that we will use decorators more often that, than we will create them. In uh, TypeScript, we can only use decorators uh, as attachment to classes and uh, class members. This means that for functional programming, we can't use them. I think that's, uh, uh, there's a pity there. Well, where to use decorators? Whenever we want to easily add reusable logic to our existing code. How is the syntax? With a simple add and then the name of the decorators. We can also attach parameters and we, as we will see later in this tutorial. And below the decorators, the decorator, we will see the field that it affects. For in this uh, lower example, you will see that we have a decorator for a class field. Well, in TypeScript, decorators have a long history. Until version 5, we had decorators, but we they were experimental. So in order to use them, we had to use the experimental decorators flag. Since TypeScript 5, type decorators are now at stage 3, and they are also a JavaScript feature. So in TypeScript 5, we use stage 3 JavaScript decorators. And you must understand that stages 2 and 3 are very, very different. So if you want to use the new versions of decorators, use stage 3 JavaScript decorators. This tutorial presents stage 3, so the new ways of decorators, and uh, for code, there's a link inside the description with a repository with all the code. Also, check the core, the video outline for different parts uh, and different ways in which we can use decorators. This being said, let's get to code. Let's now write our first decorators, our first modern decorators. And first of all, let's uh, talk a, a little about the setup without before moving on into the details. Let's look at the TS config that we need in order to write stage three decorators. And currently I have a very simple project. And as you can see, all we need to do in order to write uh, stage three decorators is a some compiler options with a target and uh, the way typescript knows which kind of decorators we are using inside our project is by the value of this experimental experimental decorators option if this is set to false which is the default value then typescript assumes that we are using the stage 3 decorators if this is set to true then typescript assumes that we are using the old versions of decorators if i didn't uh, specify this then this will take its uh, default value which is false and this way typescript knows that if we have decorators in our code base they will be the new version stage 3. well let's proceed also to see some uh, insights of a decorator First of all, I've, uh, I have a very basic class called manager, which has only two fields in, and a constructor in which, I'm, uh, in which I'm making a log. And first of all, I've created a decorator, our first modern decorator, which is called print decorator metadata. Print decorator data. And as you can see, it has two arguments, a value and a context. The value is usually a function or a constructor function, as we will see later on. And the context is class decorator context. This means that if I specified the context with a type class decorator context, then I can't call this decorator on other stuff like a field. You know, if I, uh, I will choose a more generic uh, declaration of this, then I will also, then I will be able to call the decorator in other places. You know, this is the beauty of these modern decorators. We have much more powerful types. And now let's see what's inside these decorators without before uh, taking any action with them. As you can see, I have defined this decorator right here. And all I'm doing right here is printing 
its arguments, the value and the context. And also I'm calling the add initializer function for the context. Let's inspect when this function is called and also when this decorator is called. Because currently I have no instances of this manager class, but I have added this decorator to the manager class. Will it be called or not? Yes, it will be called because as soon as I'm writing this right here, the decorator will be invoked. Let's see this in, uh, in action. And uh, for these decorator examples, I will not uh, execute them with node. I will execute them inside the browser because we will do a lot of printing and inside the browser prints are much more nicer to read. Well, let's, let's see this example. I will first um, compile this and then I will open inside an index.html file right here with a reference to our manager.js. Let's open this file. All right, and let's see what we get right here. First of all, you, you can see the value and the value in this case is directly the compiled code for this uh, class. This is the value that we get the, uh, that we are getting for class decorators. It's really not much in this uh, example. What is interesting right here is the context. And as you can see, the kind of our context is class. We are getting the name, in, which in our case is the name of uh, our class, the name of our property, our pro prototype. And also you can see the action from our add initializer method right here. So remember this add initializer and the whole decorator is called even before having instantiated any instances of our class right here. All right, let's do some real stuff with our decorators. And what I want to do right here is to add some data to this manager instance right here. And we will do it in two ways. The, an easy way with prototypes and a more complicated way with directly with class uh, definitions. Let's see the easy way. And let's say that we want a field called employment date on each entry of our manager instances. All right, so let's write ourselves a uh, decorator which does that. And I've uh, wrote the decorator, I've called it with employment date on prototype. And basically what this does it takes, it takes the value and inside its prototype, it will add a field called employment date on prototype, which is just simply a new date. Let's call this decorator right here. All right, let's save this, compile and see what we get. And first of all, of course, let's log things now. And now we are calling this decorator and we are creating a new instance of our manager and we are printing it. Let's see what happens. All right, again, we are getting the message from the con constructor this time because we are instantiating it. But if we look at our manager, well, there's nothing new inside the fields right here. But if we look at the prototype of this manager, you will see that we will have a field called employment date on prototype and we are getting the current date. Well, this was the way, the simple way in which we can add data to our uh, classes right here using prototype. Let's also see a more complex way in which we can do this because what I want to do is to add a new field right here inside the object definition, not inside the prototype. Well, and I have wrote this uh, decorator implementation. What we are doing here is uh, really simple. What is very interesting about this uh, declaration are the types. And what we want to do here or what we want to have, we want a class that extends our base class, or we want a class that we can call a constructor on. This is the reason I have uh, wrote here a generic type T extends uh, this object, which has a new function right here. And this indicates to TypeScript that we want to call this function on a fun function that is a constructor function. If I will uh, leave this right here, for example, if I will not have this uh, t extends right here, you'll see that we will get the, info, the error that type t is not a constructor function type, you know? And this is the reason I have added these new arguments right here. Basically, we are not using the context right here. What we are using is our base class, but this time we are not adding it 
uh, adding data to its prototype, we are directly calling the constructor and adding a new field right here. Let's see if this is also working. So let's call this uh, decorator right here. All right, let's compile and open it inside the browser. And now again, we have our manager. Let's see. And now, as you can see, we are getting this employment date also as a field inside the manager object itself. That's great. So we saw in this lecture two ways in which we can add data to our object. One is directly by adding data to the prototype and also by adding a more complex object or a more complex example when it comes to the types by adding data directly to the constructor function. As a last note to this lecture, I want to point out that the ex current example from the TypeScript documentation, if we you will look at the uh, decorator for classes, you'll see this uh, sealed decorator right here, which calls object.seal. And uh, currently, this doesn't work with the new implementation. If I will call right here at sealed, usually we should have a compilation error because this sealed will prevent us of from adding data to the prototype and also from extending the class. But if we try to run this code, so we expect an error right now, but currently everything works as it should. So currently this is a problem. Maybe by the time you are watching this, this will be fixed, or maybe there's a better way in which we can uh, call this object dos, dot sealed. Currently, this doesn't work, but maybe it will work in the future. Let's proceed to the next lecture and talk about field decorators. Let's now see how uh, the new field decorators work in TypeScript 5. And to understand this, I've created yet again a dumpy example, but you will see we will get into some interesting points regarding field decorators in TypeScript. Let's uh, understand first the example. We have the most simple class ever, a manager class, which has a field called tasks, which is of type task array, and this array, which is a simple type with a name and a level which can be low medium or complicated really really basic typescript stuff let's say that we want to write a decorator which which can be called only on fields which are of type task array and this is called with complicated task what we will this will do it will add a new task to this task array a task that is complicated well Let's see how we can do this. And before writing the actual implementation, let's observe this, the types inside this decorator. First of all, we have the type of the context is class field decorator context. But as you can see, this receives two generic arguments and this uh, really shows the power of new modern decorators. As you can see, this receives some arguments of type T and V, the documentation tells us that t comes from this and v comes from value. Well, what are those? Well, t uh, usually should uh, return the type of the instance that we are using it. And the v represents the type of the decorator class field. In our case, if we are decorating a class field, which is of type task array, then in this case, v is of type task array. Other important point about uh, field decorators, their target is undefined. So for field decorators, we will not get any information about the underlying target or prototype class. Remember this, there are all kinds, since this is a new functionality, there are all kinds of uh, undocumented or unwritten rules about the way these decorators work. And talking about unwritten rules, Let's see this uh, um, strange uh, syntax right here or, or strange code right here. We are writing a function, uh, a decorator function, which receive, which returns back a, another function, which receives an, uh, some arguments of type V and returns back this, those exact arguments. Basically, nothing. This decorator currently does nothing, but what it does, it gives us access to our 
field. So in this case we are returning a function which receives of some arguments and these arguments are exactly our tasks right here. And basically right here inside this function we have access to our tasks. So all we need to do is call these arguments, push, because this should be an array and here we should push our complicated task. This is all we need to do, but as you can see, since we are using TypeScript, things are not that uh, easy because it will tell us that this push doesn't exist on type V because currently we didn't specify anything about this V, so this V can be under the hood is of type uh, unknown. Well, how we can uh, specify that this V contains some tasks right here? Very simple by using inside this this um, generic definition the extends task array right here. And now the compiler really knows that these arguments are of type task array and we can call the push method and with exact strong types right here and some name I say right here added task and also the level should be complicated. All right and basically we are done. As you can see the types here are very strong. If for example these tasks will be not a task array but will be for example a string array then we will get a compilation error because currently this with compilated complicated task can only be called on a field which is of type task array. You know, this is the, again, the beauty of modern TypeScript decorators. Let's see if this is working. So let's execute this code. I will start a terminal and first of all, and I have executed this code, I have compiled it and opened it inside a browser. And let's see, as you can see, we have this manager class, which is uh, has some task. And as you can see, this task as an entry, the first element, which is level complicated, and the name is added task, the added task from our decorator right here. Well, this was the way field decorators work. We only scratched the surface. For this, we didn't look at anything regarding the context. Maybe there's a lot of things we can do with the context, but this was just one example. Let's uh, move on into the next lecture and talk about decorator factories. For example, this with complicated task uh, can be refactored into a more general approach. Maybe we can create a decorator called with task and we can directly pass the, op the task that we want to do. And this should be a uh, decorator factory or a decorator which can receive arguments. Let's see how we can do this inside the next like In this lecture we will talk about decorator factories or a very big and complicated word to say that we can pass parameters, parameters to our decorator functions. A really simple concept with a complicated name and let's see how we can do this. We will start from the example from the previous lecture, which in which we had a decorator called with complicated task, but we said, hey, maybe we can make things a little more general and we should have a decorator with task that receives a task and add, then adds it to the tasks of our manager. Let's see how we can do this. And as I said, first of all, we need a very simple function. So here I'll say function, call this with task. And first of all, this with task will receive a task of type task. All right. And what we need to do right here is basically return back this whole decorator function. So here I will say return function. And all I need to do right here is simply copy and paste this whole other decorator. And basically we are done. What we have right here inside this with task function, we have a task entry and basically we can simply put it right here. Format this a little and everything should be all right. Now, if we want to call this with task and with not with complicated task, we can simply say right here with task, but we have an error because now this one receives an argument of type task. And we can say right here, name, this is added task 
and also level. Let's make this a simple task. Oh, right here. But we can also keep the old implementation with complicated task, but of course we can make it a lot more simple now that we have with this with task generic. So if we want still a decorator with uh, which is called with complicated task, let me get rid of everything. What we need right here is to simply return our with task. And right here we can pass a complicated task. For example, name again is added name or any name. And the task itself is all right. Now we have also a decorator called with complicated task with one key difference. Maybe let's also add a new field right here. Call this extra tasks. And now we can call this with complicated task. But now since this is also a decorator factory, TypeScript is not smart enough to look deep inside this uh, task. We can call it as a function. And now we have a general decorator called with task and also a more particular decorator with complicated task. Let's see if uh, this is working. Let me compile and run this example. And I have run this example. Let's look at this manager class. We have this extra tasks which has this added task which is complicated because we uh, called this with complicated task and also we have our task with our added task. So everything works as it should. Usually this is the best way and a very easy way to send parameters to our decorators by wrapping them inside a function that receives that parameter. Pretty straightforward. Let's proceed into the next lecture and talk about method decorators. Let's see in this lecture how the new method decorators work in TypeScript. And to understand this, I've created a very basic example. Let's say that we have a class project which has a limited budget. For our example is a, a budget 900. And this project can have um, multiple uh, actions that can happen inside it. For example, it has, can have an action for writing tests, it, uh, but it has also an action for fixing bug, it, bugs in production. Well, each action or some actions would require some budget and they can only be uh, done if there's enough budget for them. Well, if, for example, we would do two times fixing bugs in production, then the second time we would run out of budget and we won't be able to do this action. Well, how we can prevent uh, to take an action uh, to execute a method if we are run out of budget inside our project? Well, we will do this. Well, well, there are multiple ways in which we can solve this problem. Let's solve it with method decorators. And for this, I've created a at least the signature of a uh, method decorator also which receives an argument of type um, budget of type number a budget and as you can see each uh, method requires a budget as you understand from this example writing tests it's much more cheaper than fixing bugs in production well let's see how we can implement this uh, decorator right here and uh, before implementing it let's look at the uh, return type at the types right here the types type of the context is class method decorator context and as you can see this one receives only one generic argument the other one is the var argument switch of its of type any well and to make sure that i um, running this only on classes which has a budget because this is the check we are doing right here i've wrote this generic to extend a class which has a budget because we will need to work with this budget inside uh, our project well maybe make things uh, clearer let's just say right here action budget you know to have uh, no problems with our implementation well how we can do this first of all to get an entry over the this uh, type we need to return back the function so here i'll say return a function a function again which receives an argument of type args which is of type any and the cool thing about here that inside this returning function we have access 
to the local instance. So here we'll say const instance is this as t because inside this function this will send us to the our class right here our local instance you know this is counterintuitive it but this is just the way it is so this will return us with our instance and i'm making a cast to t so now we know that our instance have a budget well now we can proceed to actually write our implementation and do our checks if we have budget or we don't have budget so first of all we are making an if and we are checking if we have budget for our action so here i'll say instance budget is bigger than the budget required for our action then if this is bigger we should uh, take the budget back so here i'll say instance budget is instance budget and here we are taking back our action budget you know so we are taking back the budget and then we can proceed to actually execute the function and we can execute this by calling target call the apply and we are applying our instance and because this apply requires two arguments first of all this which is a type function and also our arguments so in our case is our instance and also our arguments and this way we are calling our actual method but if we don't have budget else if we don't have budget we won't call our method this is very important so we won't call our method if we run out of budget instead we will simply make a console log or a console error of a error message and i wrote right here inside the console error that we have insufficient budget for our action which is the name of our method right here we require this budget but we only have this budget and basically we are done with our implementation in the end we also need to return back this target i'm not sure if we need to return this or not in this new version of decorators but let's see if this is working so first of all let's only run this method once with fixing bugs in production so we have a budget of 900 and uh, fixing bugs in production takes 500 so everything should be all right we should be able to execute this fixing bug in production at least once let's open this inside the browser and see if this is working and as you can see at least the first time it works we have enough budget for our action and here we see that we are fixing the bug in production but what happens if we have multiple bugs inside our production because we didn't have time for tests well let's uh, save this and let's try to run this again this time we should run out of budget compile this and run it again as you can see it works to uh, do it once but a second time we will get an error message that tells us insufficient budget for fixed bugs in production required 500 available 400 and what's very cool about this is that as you can see there are no more logs after this this means that this log or this function wasn't executed because we run out of budget we don't see this log inside the console this means that this function wasn't executed a second time because we run out of budget well this was one example of uh, methods decorators inside the new versions of uh, decorators inside typescript well, of course there are many ways in which we can write them but you saw here an example what you need to understand right here that again we are returning a function and inside the function that we are returning we have access to the instance of our class let's proceed into the next lecture and talk about some more complicated decorators the accessors Let's talk about one last type of decorators, the accessor decorators. And my experience is that as uh, the features of the decorators become less and less uh, small, their signatures become less and less more, more and more complicated. And why do I mean by that? Here we have a very basic feature, an accessor. And this is an accessor not from TypeScript, it is from JavaScript, from modern JavaScript. This is called an auto accessor. And my idea uh, when uh, I've prepared this course was to do the same as I did in the first part of this course, to have a decorator 
which is called watch change, which simply notifies or sends a notification every time a field, a particular field is changed. And by sending a notification, I just want for basic, uh, basically to say, see a console log. Well, this is, this is not possible to uh, write this watch change decorator with the new versions of decorators. Why? Because remember, the modern decorators received as target, they receive undefined, so they don't get an uh, access to the target itself. This way we need to write our decorators in another way. And one way in which we can uh, write this watch change decorator is by decorating a accessor or a getter and a setter. And I've uh, wrote it already. I will just in this lecture I will just explain it and run it. It's not there's no point in uh, watching me type all this. Basically, let's look first at the type of the con of the context. And as you can see, we are receiving a class access or decorator context which receives a T and a V. T is the type of the instance itself, and the V is the type of our field right here, just as with field decorators. The other important point right here is the accessor and its type. And as you can see, this is a very complicated uh, type for the accessor. We don't really need, need this, but I've uh, set, write it like this to have very strong type inside the decorator. Basically, we are returning again, we are returning a two functions this time. We are overwriting the get and the set functions. And basically, this is their default implementation. What is added right here in the set function, a console log. So now, if I will run this decorator, I will simply see a console log to uh, the new value of the field every time the field changes. Let's run this and see how it is working. As you can see, every time we are changing our project, we will get a log. So if we are setting the project right here, if we are setting the project to complicated project, we will get the log setting project to complicated project and uh, so on, so on. So basically, this is the base implementation of this uh, accessor decorator. As you can see, here we are calling the setter and the getter. If I want to add some sprinkles, you know, when we want to um, when we are getting the decorator, maybe I can just say right here plus some sprinkles. And now if I will uh, console log my project right here, let's uh, compile and run this again. If I will refresh this, you will see that I'm getting this super complicated project, which is uh, its field, but I'm also getting some sprinkles because this is now what the getter does. It had something new to the returned value. Wait, well, what? why would you do that? Not for a reason. I just want to highlight how this uh, new version of the get function works. Well, this is, I, in my opinion, one of the most complicated decorators that uh, we can write and one of the not so often used decorators. I just wanted to show you how we, we can um, implement this and also how we can deal with more complicated signatures of our decorators. With this lecture, we are finishing the section about decorators and uh, I thank you for watching this section. So we have reached the end of the tutorial. Uh, with uh, this occasion, I want to thank you for reaching this point. Don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, everything uh, people say at the end of the videos. And uh, this being said, have a nice day and I'll see you around.